Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. I uh, hope you all had a good break. Uh, we now continue with a very exciting set of presentations and the first one is by uh, Professor Snoor and uh, he's joined us from Chicago, uh, from Northwestern University. And uh, the theme is about metal organic frameworks and how large scale screening of MOFs can, you know, help find applications in methane storage and also other applications. So Professor Snow, you have about 15 minutes, uh, two minutes before the end of your presentation, I will intervene just to give you a heads up. Uh, otherwise, the stage is yours. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, thanks for the, the introduction. Um, so as indicated, I'm gonna talk about using um, computational screening to find porous materials for things like storing natural gas or, or other applications. And this is the basic pipeline that we have in mind. We'll start with some large number of candidate structures, um, perform molecular simulations on these materials and predict their properties, and try to identify top performing candidates that um, our colleagues then can go into the lab and make, and ultimately to find materials that would be useful in different applications. For example, storing natural gas uh, on a vehicle. So why are we interested in nanoporous materials? Uh, the, the basic idea is that um, porous materials with well-controlled structures at the nanoscale um, can be really useful for um, recognizing and discriminating between different molecules. So we can use this to perform separations. So for example, you can separate um, oxygen from air with porous materials. Um, you can capture CO2 from exhaust gas or potentially even directly out of the air. You can remove contaminants from water. And th there are a lot of separations that occur in the chemical industry that are very energy intensive with current technologies like distillation. And nanoporous materials have the potential to perform those same separations, but at much lower energy cost. Porous materials are also used in catalysis and sensing. And then what I'm going to talk about as an example application today is storing um, high energy molecules like hydrogen or natural gas, which is mostly methane. And there are a variety of porous materials um, available. Things like zeolites and activated carbons are already widely used in industry. You can make porous silicas. And the class of materials that I'm going to talk about are known as metal organic frameworks or, or MOFs. So these are porous crystalline materials, and they're made in a, a really interesting way from metal nodes that are connected by these organic linker molecules. Um, so in, in this case, the, the linker connects to two different nodes, but in this other case, this linker connects to six different metal nodes. And so you get a variety of different topologies. You can change the pore size. You can introduce different chemical functionality. And you can make an enormous number of different structures and really think about tuning them for different applications. The two materials that I'm showing you here were developed by my colleagues, Joe Hupp and Omar Farha. They're also here at Northwestern University. And, and we work very closely together, as you'll see in the talk. So here are some pictures of some moths. Um, they are, they are here in a, a pellet or a particle, um, but each of these particles that you're looking at are made up of micron-sized crystals. So if you look at these under a microscope, you see these, these lovely um, crystals. And if we zoom in even further down to the molecular scale, again, then we see these metal nodes connected by these organic linker molecules to form pores that are about the size of a nanometer. And these structures look a lot like these toys that I played with as a little boy, um, these tinker toys. And what we're doing as chemists and chemical engineers is we have this box of pieces. And the question is, well, which pieces should we take out of the box? And, and how should we connect them together to form different structures that might have useful properties? And there are an enormous number of MOFs that have already been synthesized. Um, so thousands of structures with different pores, different geometries, different metals. And the primary question that my group thinks about these days is, given this enormous number of structures, this enormous variety, how do we de 